Hi, this is Dallas of Fun and Failure. I like to visit exotic places like Egypt, Italy, and even the outer space. So enjoy these five stories that will make you feel like you're not in your mother's basement playing with green screen. And I hope you enjoy. So this frack up happened about a couple of years ago. I was living in an apartment complex in a rural area, literally, because it was close to work. I had a friend, friend A, that lived in a downstairs apartment a few over mine. I lived on the third floor at the time. I also had a female roommate that I barely knew, which was introduced to me by another friend of mine. We'll just call him friend B. Friend A and friend B and I all worked together. So, one night friend B was at my apartment hanging out, and we thought it would be a brilliant idea to prank my female roommate when she comes home and pretend we were burglars. We dressed up completely in black clothing from head to toe. Black beanies, sunglasses, black shirts over the faces, black jacket, black jeans, etc. You get the idea. I texted my roommate to see when she would be coming home at that night, but it wasn't going to be until late. It was already close to 9 o'clock, and friend B had to be home soon. So, he thought it would be a good practice to try on our friend A, a few apartments over. At the time, I didn't think much of it and thought it would be hilarious. Excited, yet nervous, we walked downstairs over to friend A's apartment with baseball bats. Note, we were still completely dressed up in black. He usually left his door open all the time, rural area. We walked into the apartment thinking he was still up because it was only 9 o'clock. All we saw was a pitch black living room. By now, we alerted his two small dogs that barked at us as we stood near the front door. Friend A came down the hallway to the living room kitchen, and that's when he saw us. Confused at first, not knowing what to do, we pointed the bats at him and said, GET ON THE GROUND! What happened next was bloody screams. Friend A stumbled around the kitchen in fear for his life, still screaming. I have never heard anyone scream that loud before. What happened next seemed so surreal. He Superman through the apartment's double pane window and screen. And when I say Superman, I mean he literally dove through the window with no piece of his body near the ground. He shattered right through the glass and continued running. To make a long story shorter, cops ended up showing up because a lady called 911 when she saw a friend A running and screaming. We took responsibility as soon as the cops arrived and told them it was a prank gone wrong. The cop didn't believe that he dove through the window, so he went inside to see for himself. Friend A ended up getting 42 stitches from his shoulder down to his toes. The next day at work, everyone was already talking about the incident. Again, roll area. Come to find out, Friend A's girlfriend was still in the bedroom at the time he jumped out of the window that night. She never woke up until the following morning. We ended up paying for his medical bills and a new window. We no longer talk much with Friend A anymore after the incident. I am a 16 year old female. It was my first time in an ambulance and I'm okay now. Anyways, it had been a seemingly uneventful day, especially since it was a snow day. My sister and I had been obsessed with the Great British Baking Show lately, so we passed the storm by attempting to make a Swiss roll. After a family dinner, we were cleaning up and putting dishes away in the open dishwasher. I wanted to present the cake and put a little powdered sugar on the top to jazz it up, a decision that would come back and stab me in the butt. This prompted me to get the sifter which is conveniently located directly to the right of the open dishwasher. Within this dishwasher and the closest to the sifter containing cabinet was a separate compartment for dirty cutlery, all standing to attention. So, in my motion to bend down to retrieve the tool, my unsuspecting butt felt four identical pricks as the tines of the offending dinner fork poked through my pants and sank about a quarter inch into my lower left cheek. At first, I was more in shock than anything, and was probably a pretty comical sight as I jumped up with the fork still attached to my rear. Initially, it hurt, but it was bearable. My mom freaked out and I literally had to calm her down. I asked her to pull it out, which is when I realized painfully that it was in pretty deep. Soon enough, the rest of the family saw that the situation was kind of serious, albeit hilarious, and they jumped into action. My mom called my neighbor, chiropractor, and my sister called 911. My dad, however, tried to dominate the situation. He did this by incessantly demanding we trust his Boy Scout knowledge of puncture wounds and just yank it out and apply pressure. However, my sister already had a professional on the phone, so my dad's a 
aggressive input was unnecessary and quite unhelpful to the already tense environment. In fact, it literally caused the dispatcher to think that a stabbing had actually occurred because of the yelling. So they sent like five squad cars along with the ambulance. They arrived within like one or two minutes. It was almost spooky how quick it was. I was okay by the time the EMTs arrived, a little shaken up by my dad's behavior. I had cried a bit, but they wrapped it up and had a laugh doing it. It was a good reminder of how ridiculous the whole thing was. I was smiling by the time I got to the emergency room, where I was quite obviously the entertainment on the slow night. Basically, every nurse tried to act like they were involved so they could see the girl with the fork in her rear. It was great fun. They didn't really make a production out of it. They just stuck me with some numbing shots and yanked it out, having to cut a favorite pair of my pants in the process. No stitches were necessary and apparently according to the MTs, we had done the right thing by not following my dad's advice and just pulling it out then and there. We tried the Swiss roll when we got home. It was forking amazing. And here's a picture of the Swiss roll. Presentation is a little less than top notch, but it was dang good. We mashed a couple of recipes together. The cake is lemony and the filling is homemade blackberry jam and cream. So, I recently moved to Russia to live with my wife. We went to go meet her uncle at his house just to chat about family and to give us a belated wedding gift. He's in full army uniform, but I don't think anything of it because I've already seen hundreds of guys in army uniforms every day and have become oblivious to it. At one point, we get to talking about his cat and where he got it. She's cute and playful and all of that. Then he shows how she chases after lasers, got out a laser gun and shown it around everywhere and the cat went crazy and we had a laugh. He left the laser thing on the bed. Around 30 minutes later, my wife was in the bathroom for a long time and the uncle was reading something. I was just left there being bored. I saw the cat walking by and I decided to go get the laser thing and play around with the cat for a while until the wife gets back. The laser was in the shape of a gun. I'm from England and there's no weapons or anything like that. So in my mind, it was just like a toy in the shape of a gun. We have no real guns, but millions of toy guns and things in the shape of guns. So in my English mind, it's a laser toy gun thing. The fact we're in Russia and I'm in the house of an army guy completely went over my head at this moment. So naturally, I point this thing at the floor next to the cat where she would be able to notice the laser. I pull the trigger where there was a little button for the laser somewhere else, but I didn't see it and BAM! That was the loudest freaking noise and the brightest light I've ever seen in my life. I was literally blind and deaf for like 10 to 20 seconds. When I could see again, there was smoke everywhere. The windows were shaking, the whole house was in smoke, and the alarms went off. I'm kind of in shock and I don't know what the frack just happened. People knocking at the door asking what's going on. The wife coming out and started shouting at me, calling me the biggest fracking idiot ever, saying, I left you alone for one second and look what you have done. Then I explained I thought it was just a laser to play with the cat, and she was like, Did you fracking shoot at the cat? Oh my god! And went to look. The cat was obviously scared and ran and hid somewhere I don't know where cause I was blind. We all searched for the cat for a few minutes. The uncle wasn't even mad at me. He was calm and was just worried about the cat at this point. We found it and she was fine. I stroked her and calmed her down. There was still smoke everywhere, but everything seemed to be okay. The wife was still mad at me and couldn't believe what I did. And I'm all upset cause I really didn't mean to do it. And I'm still kind of in shock. She's mad at me and I'm worried about the upcoming angry lecture from the uncle. But the uncle started laughing his butt off at the whole situation and didn't care. He gave me a pat on the back and said no worries. He thought it was hysterical that some foreign guy comes to his house, doesn't know what anything is, and frightens the crud out of himself while the wife calls him an idiot the whole time. It's pretty funny. I also start laughing, and the wife, still mad, calling us both idiots for laughing, and said it's time to go home. She was in an irritable mood for the rest of the day, but I had a good time. Today I fracked up by trying to scratch my back with a bottle of Pepto-Bismol while at work. 
So, I'm a floor manager at an office, and I was in the middle of trying to set up a computer for an employee. I was rushing around the office when, all of a sudden, I get an itch on my lower shoulder blade. The itch became my main concern. Now mind you that there are at least two wall corners that I could throw my back against and solve my itch problem. Instead, I see an extra large bottle of Pepto-Bismol and somehow think that it would work. It was long enough to reach my itch and the cap would do the job. I picked up the bottle and turned it upside down and placed it under my work shirt. I wanted to get a solid scratch and that's when it happened. The lid came off and I feel about half the bottle spill down the back of my jeans. So my back and my butt was covered in pink, and so was the floor. So, me and my friend are sitting in my room, but there are just too many mosquitoes for our liking. We decided to light a mosquito repellent coil. As the coil is spiral, my friend suggests we light it and place it on a nail hammered into a wall. The coil starts to work. Mosquitoes reduce and my friend leaves for his room, and I call it a day as well. I wake up in the middle of the night coughing badly. No idea what's happening. I switch on the light to see the whole room is full of smoke and that I am choking. After some searching, I realize that my roommate's bed, roommate was a way to meet a mate of his, is the source of the smoke. So basically, when the coil had finished burning, the last inch could not hold itself over the nail and fell on the bed below. As it was hot, it set the cushion on fire, which set the bed sheet on fire, which set the wooden bed on fire. This fire is still manageable and I quickly removed the stuff and put it on the balcony outside and put out the fire on the bed by throwing water. I turned the fans on to push out the smoke, locked my room and go to the same friend's room to sleep. Unable to sleep, I kept getting this feeling that something was still not right. I go back to check. As soon as I open the lock, I get the view of the balcony. The balcony has these big flame waves that are blackening the ceiling. Horrified, I rush back, wake up my friend, and we throw buckets and buckets of water to die it down. After the fire had died down, we checked the reason for this. Now it so happened that the cushion and the bed sheet that I had removed and kept on the balcony still had some sparks, and I had kept both of them on a wooden chair. The wooden chair had then caught fire and had this huge hole in it. Welcome back to reality. If you did like those videos, give it a thumbs up. If you got a funny story you'd like to share, just send it to me at my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again in my basement of imagination.